because it had to be. It is as long as it needs to be. Um, the idea is these lectures aren't presented with the interest of time in mind. These lectures are presented with the interest of understanding in mind. And as long as it takes for me to hear myself say something and say, no, I've said it, I feel like I've said it intelligibly, I keep on addressing and distilling the points until I say it in a way that I feel like, no, if someone was listening to what I said passively, they have to understand. So that takes time. That takes time. The intelligence process is going to take some time because I could, I could just say, oh, well, here are the five steps. There's a, there's, there are the images. There are the words. Step one is, step two is, step three, four, and five are. Uh, and, and I could do that in five minutes. And you would have a five-minute understanding of the intelligence cycle. Or I could do uh, a five-hour, which is probably what I'm going to do. I could do, you know, a two-and-a-half to five-hour deconstruction of these concepts to have a, a more informed understanding. But even that won't be deep enough. It doesn't get deep enough, as far as I'm concerned, until until I take it to text. When I take it to text, then I can't myself make it any deeper. I can't take it any deeper than publishing a book on the topic. Right? So the stage one is reading my primary text, um, thinking conceptually about whatever the, the, the topic is, presenting it to all of, all of you, and re-presenting it to myself so that I see a deeper level of complexity. But it isn't, for me, deep enough until I actually start writing. I put everything into my writing. And I, I put everything I can with respect to this vehicle. I can only take it so deep here. But if you think that this is a laborious process, you should see the writing process. The writing process is... is is so ritualized for me. It's it's almost a, a practice of worship the way that I write, um, and that requires almost absolute silence and hours of patience to formalize one small point. Um, but I would have it no other way, right? So I I do meaningfully, and I honestly do, and I mean this with my, my complete heart. I honestly do want to make this next contribution to national security affairs, not just for the United States, but national security affairs for, for any nation that is interested in security, right? Because I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a citizen of the globe, um, most importantly, right? So the top of page three, the intelligence process. Get my lucky marker out, and let's get the party started. <laughs> intelligence as process. T intelligence as process, I like that. I, oops, if I got right. Intelligence as process. See my previous analysis of the intelligence cycle here? Click on page 16. Since I've already discussed the intelligence in the previous lecture series, I will approach this introductory analysis with a bit more depth. I've already discussed the intelligence cycle. I've already made assessments and analyses based on the five, um, the five phases of this process. But my, my intent here is definitely not to regurgitate. Um, these five steps, these five phases. My intent here is to take a snapshot of each phase and distill it to its seminal complexity and then take that distilled complexity and integrate it into the industry of intelligence which is built on the relationship between intelligence and policy making. How does this concept fit into the conceptual framework which is defined by 
this relationship between policy and intelligence collection. So stage one, uh, planning and direction. Planning and direction. Absolutely critical point. Anytime you see the word key in the notes, you know it's super important. Right? That's an indication to you, if this is the first time watching my videos or reading my notes, it's an indication to you that this point is very important. So key. Key distinction between secrets and mysteries. Key distinction between secrets and mysteries. The former allows for the possibility of gaining access to information. When we talk about secrets, when we talk about secrets, we recognize that secrets hold, they store information. And I want to be able to gain access to secrets. So when we talk about secrets, secrets allow for the allowing for the possibility is my wording. Secrets allow for the possibility to access information. There's many different ways that you can do this, right? You can open source, which would really be bad to. Well, actually, I take that back. Well, I'm not gonna. I, I got. I also got to remember I'm giving this publicly, so you know. Anyway, <laughs> there's many, many different ways in which you can. Do your secrets. You do the old traditional, shh, don't tell anybody. Well, if you say, shh, don't tell anybody, I might want to use some uh, human intelligence to get that person to tell me what you said they would never tell you. So I say, shh, I, I heard they told you not to say anything. But guess what? I know you like money. I got some money. Let me know. I'll give you some money. It's a little transaction. <laughs> I get access, right? The idea is, in terms of secrets, if we're making a distinction between a secret and a mystery, there is at least the possibility to gain, and this is already deep, right? This is already a gem. You know, and I, 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 I hope everybody realizes how generous I am. <laughs> I don't like giving away gems so easily. This is not this is not a minor point at all, right? This is this is a bona fide gem, right? It might not seem like it is, but it is. The idea is that in terms of secrets, secrets allow for the possibility to access the information that gives the secret meaning. I'll say that again. Secrets allow for the possibility to access the information that gives that secret meaning. Last time, secrets allow for the possibility of accessing the information that gives the secret meaning. There is information at the core which is hidden, but that information is conceptually accessible. How you access it is the trick. How do I get that information is the trick, but the idea is the information is there to be had. Thus it is a secret. So that it preserves, this is the key point, is that the secret preserves the possibility for accessibility. Right? This is how I think. Right? We've got to take it deep. Right? The, the secret to be a secret means that you have at least preserved the possibility for accessing information. It's there. You could conceptually, not that you will, not that it will be easy, but you could theoretically, conceptually, access the information because the information is there to be accessed. Which is different from a mystery. Which is different from a mystery. So we'll talk about secrets versus mysteries. Uh, where am I? M R S T E R I E S. Right. The former, being the secret, allows for the possibility of gaining access to information. The latter does not. A mystery does not. In intelligence planning, then. The mystery hampers the possibility for even planning. To be technical, you could say, I'm not saying that you have to say, but you could say, and I don't want to get too deep because this will get really complicated in a bit, and those of you know I've already formalized this mathematically, but you could say that the secret is a known unknown. I know that I don't know X. I know that there's this information out there X, and that X is being kept a secret, and I know that I don't know this information, X, 